I was 21 years old at the time, a young man preparing for the Christmas festivities. However, fate had different plans for the start of my holiday season. It was one fateful night, around one o'clock in the morning, and I found myself alone at home. I lay in bed, on the cusp of drifting off into slumber, when a sudden notification jolted me awake. It was an alert on my phone, notifying me of someone at the door. As I swung the door open, my heart plummeted into my stomach. There, standing right at my front door, was a figure cloaked in a ski mask, gripping a menacing handgun. It felt like a scene straight out of a thriller, but this was all too real. Instantly, panic coursed through me. I sprang into action, darting out of bed and hastily donning my shoes and jacket. Time was of the essence, and I didn't bother with pants, though I was thankful for the small comfort of my underwear. Swiftly and quietly, I slipped out the back door. As I hit the sidewalk, the chill on my bare legs was a stark reminder of my vulnerability. Ignoring the discomfort, I sprinted towards the police station, a mere six blocks from my home. Upon arrival, I spotted an officer and urgently recounted the harrowing ordeal. He offered to accompany me back for a thorough check. In the safety of the patrol car, we returned to my house. The officer entered, and after what felt like an eternity, emerged with the intruder in handcuffs. Stepping out of the car, I approached the officer and the apprehended individual, disbelief etched across my face. I'm a 25-year-old woman, and I share my life with my 26-year-old boyfriend. For almost 10 months, we've called our cozy apartment home. I spend my days looking after our space while my boyfriend is at work, tackling various shifts. You see, I'm dealing with kidney failure, undergoing dialysis, and patiently awaiting a transplant. This means work isn't an option for me right now, but I've taken on the role of homemaker with pride focusing on cooking, cleaning, and tending to our beloved dogs. One day, just a week ago, my boyfriend set off for work at precisely 12 o'clock p.m. I was nestled in bed when my phone alerted me to motion at our front door. In an instant, I checked the feed and my heart skipped a beat. A man stood there, fiddling with the handle. Just as my dogs erupted into barks, he seemed startled and darted towards the dirt area behind our patio. I quickly reached out to my boyfriend, updating him on the situation. He suggested I call our building manager, requesting them to send someone over on a go-kart to ensure the man had not lingered. I agreed, but not before mustering up the courage to inspect the door once more. In one hand, I held my phone, eyes fixed on the live feed, while in the other, I clutched our firearm. My woman's intuition was unyielding. Approaching the door, I heard an unsettling beep followed by the distinct wear of an electric drill. My pulse quickened. I peeked through the small window next to the entrance, and there he was, the same man. He tampered with the camera, rendering it useless. In an instant, I dialed 911, positioning myself, gun in hand, ready to defend. With the operator on the line, I relayed our address and the urgent situation. I described the man in detail, every inch of him etched into my memory. My warning seemed to halt him momentarily. The room now hushed. The operator assured me police were within the complex, and soon an officer arrived at my door. They scored the surroundings, but he had vanished. It left us convinced he resided somewhere in our community. Ours is a gated complex with only two exits, the main office with its vigilant cameras, and a rear exit near our apartment. I appeared to be his target, always alone at home. It's likely he'd been watching for some time. He knew what he was doing, using a device to disable my cameras, backpack brimming with tools for heaven knows what. Reflecting on this sends shivers down my spine. Had I not acted swiftly, who knows what could have transpired. In two months, we're planning to leave. This once comforting space now feels tainted. The constant unease is overwhelming, every creak and shuffle sending me into a panic. Even walking our dogs feels fraught with fear, afraid he might return to finish what he started. This ordeal has reinforced the importance of trusting one's intuition. 
it truly can be a lifesaver. I'm a 33-year-old woman, and this strange incident occurred when I was 25, living with a roommate named Justin in a quaint, rural town nestled in the Shenandoah Mountains of Virginia. Our charming house boasted modern updates, but there was an odd design flaw that struck me as unsettling. A window inside the first floor bathroom, situated right within the shower. It measured about two feet in height and approximately one foot across. When facing the shower head, the window would be to your right, starting at about waist level and extending just past my shoulders. Naturally, this setup was disconcerting. It meant that anyone outside could peer into the shower, potentially catching an unintended glimpse. To mitigate this, I had adorned the window with frosted glass, hoping it would obscure any view from the outside, leaving nothing but indistinct shadows. Still, the idea of showering at night always gave me the creeps, knowing that someone outdoors might glimpse my silhouette. One snowy day shortly after the new year, a heavy blanket of snow kept us homebound. Justin had headed to his girlfriend's place, leaving me to my own devices. Most of the day was spent cocooned in blankets, binge-watching Netflix, and eventually, I drifted into slumber. When I awoke, darkness had settled in, and I realized I needed to shower for work the following day. Now you'll recall that my bathroom was on the first floor. Despite my aversion to nighttime showers, it was a necessity. I mustered up my courage, stepped in, and began to wash. Barely five minutes had passed when I was jolted by a loud, deliberate slap against the window, emanating from inside the shower. My heart plummeted into my stomach, freezing me in place. Another harsh slap followed. I retreated to the far end of the tub, out of view, and listened, the water still cascading. It was unmistakable. Human hands were pressing against the window. Panic surged through me. I grabbed my towel and exited the shower, but left the water running. Instead of fleeing or grabbing my phone, I stood my ground, inexplicably captivated by what would happen next. Looking back, it's baffling why I didn't immediately leave the bathroom or dial 911. Suddenly, there was a renewed onslaught. Two hands wrestled with the window, attempting to push it upwards. Then, three solid thuds against the wall leading to the back of the house. It was enough to spur me into action. I rushed for my phone and called Justin, recounting the terrifying ordeal. He assured me he was still at his girlfriend's, which he promptly confirmed with a FaceTime call. He urged me to dial 911, and without hesitation, I hung up and made the call. Within moments, three officers arrived. Fresh snow blanketed the ground, creating a pristine canvas. While one officer spoke with me, the other two meticulously inspected the exterior and yard. They returned with bewildered expressions, reporting that they found no one and no tracks whatsoever in the snow surrounding the house. It left us all baffled. To this day, the mystery persists. I have no answers, no explanation for who or what was slapping the window that eerie night. The absence of tracks in the snow outside chills me to the core. The incident remains an enigma, a haunting memory that continues to leave me unsettled. Thank you for watching Whispering Tales TV, so don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and join our community of fellow thrill seekers. Get ready for spine-tingling stories that will keep you up at night. Let the Whispering Tales begin.